In the previous tutorial, we made the poor man's web browser. In this tutorial, we'll make the poor man's web server. And although it sounds more difficult, we'll write a functioning web server and then connect to it using Firefox. Now to begin with, I'd like to point out that I've added a couple of files to this project. Here on the left hand side you can see that we have a folder called web and then a subdirectory within that called other and then I've put a couple of dummy HTML files in here. You can see that this directory is actually mapped to our project space and if I were to double click on web you could see that we have our HTML files on the inside and if I were to click on other you could see that we have test3 on the inside of that. Alright so to begin with we're actually going to start out the same way we started the last tutorial using system IO and using system.net.sockets and then we'll drop down to main. Now to set up a server we're going to create something called a TCP listener. So we'll say TCP listener listener gets a new TCP listener and notice that it asks for a port to open up. Now if you recall from the tutorial that was the introduction to network programming you'll remember that the first 1024 ports are reserved by the operating system. So if you have administrative rights on your machine, you could put in port 80 here. Otherwise, let's put in port 1302. The next thing after that is we want to start the listener, so I can say listener.start. And because we want this server to dish out information all the time, I'll create an infinite loop while true. And then on the inside of that, I'll say console.writeline waiting for a connection. Now if a client out there decides to connect to my server, it's actually going to return me a TCP client. So that would look something like this. I could say TCP client, client gets listener dot accept TCP client. Now this is a blocking call, meaning that at this point the server is going to wait for a client to connect to it. All right, we can drop down to the next line and say stream reader SR gets new stream reader, giving it client dot get stream, just like we saw before. We can do the same thing with a stream writer. SW gets a new stream writer, passing it client.getStream. And because we're working with networks and we're working with streams, it's a good idea to worry about exception handling. So we'll say try, and then catch a generic exception E here. Then we can jump back up here into the try. Now remember the first thing that's going to happen is the client is going to make a request. So let's handle that first. So let's say string request gets sr.readline and of course this is going to contain the request from the client's web browser and it might be a good idea just to go ahead and print that out so we can say console.writeline request now because that request is in that format that we saw before of get and then the name of the page and then the protocol we want to be able to split that request using the space as the delimiter so I'll say string array tokens gets request.split and pass it a space. Now because we split that string using the space as the delimiter, the zeroth item is going to be the word get, the first item is going to be the page, and then the second item is going to be the HTTP string. So let's grab the page, we can say string page gets tokens of one, and then we're going to check to see if they requested the default page or not. So if the page is equal to quote slash quote, then we know that they're going to be requesting the default web page. So we'll say page gets default .htm. All right, the next thing that we need to do is to find the file. So we'll put a comment in here, find the file. And this is the file that the client requested. So let's create another stream reader. Stream reader file gets a new stream reader. And again, we have to hit this web directory up here. So what we'll do is we'll say dot dot slash dot dot slash web. And that'll get us to the directory. And then we'll add the page that they're looking for. So in other words, when we get this request, we're going to go up a couple of directories, and then we're going to dig down into the web directory, where all of our web pages reside. Okay, after that, we need to respond to the web browser. So I'll say sw.writeline, and we'll say something very specific. We'll say http slash 1.0, that's the protocol, and then send back a 200 OK and a slash in. And what this means is that the request was understood and that we found that file. At this point, we found the file, and we need to send it to the client's web browser. So let's drop down here and put a comment that says send the file. So I'll read the first line of data from the file. I'll say string data gets file.readline. And just like we saw in the previous tutorials, while the data does not equal null, we're going to write that data to the client. And then we're going to flush that stream. The last thing we need to do is to read more data. So we can say data gets file 
dot read line. Okay, now notice what's going on here. We try to find the file, but what happens if that file doesn't exist? Well, in this case, an exception is going to be thrown. So we can come down here, and we know there's been some kind of error. So another part of HTTP is I can send back a 404, meaning that I couldn't find that file. So to do that, I'll say sw.writeline. And I'll put in, again, something very specific, HTTP slash 1.0, 404. And then I could say just about anything here. For now, I'll just say OK, even though that's not the way things really work, and then say slash n. Then what I'll do is I'll actually send some HTML. So I can say sw.writeline, and I'll send some HTML like this, h1, sorry, maybe we couldn't find your file. And then we probably need to end with an ending h1. Last thing we need to do is to flush, and then right after that, no matter what, we'll say client.close. Okay, this looks good, although I think we'll need a slash right here. So we'll go ahead and run it. And when we do this, notice the first time we get the security alert. The reason is because we've written code that's now trying to open up a network connection, and Windows is asking if this is OK. So we'll allow access. And if you notice up here, it says waiting for a connection. So let's test it out with Firefox. So if I come over here, first thing you need to know is I can type in localhost. And what localhost means is the current machine that's running. It means don't go out there on the network, look at the local machine. The next thing that I'll put is a colon 1302. And what this says is, instead of using the default port of port 80, instead use port 1302. Now when I hit return, you can see that it returns us the default web page. Now going back and looking at the DOS prompt, you can see that we actually received several requests from the web browser. So let's try a couple more things. I'll come over here. And let's request that test1 page. So I'll put in test1.htm. And this is how test1 looks. We can do the same thing for test2. This is even worse. OK, so we can come back and look at the DOS prompt again. And you can see these requests are coming in. So this get slash test1.htm is actually from Firefox. Another thing that we can do is come back over here. If you noticed, I have an other directory inside the web directory. So let's go back to Firefox. And that's how this would work. You could type in other slash test3.htm. And when I do that, you can see that test3 is pulled up. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you now understand a little bit more about how to write a web server.